Hello everyone, uh, my name is Matt Gibb. Uh, I work at Maxar, I'm based out of Herndon, Virginia, uh, just outside of Washington, DC. Uh, I'm here today to talk to you all about uh, some work that we're doing in St. Louis, uh, working with local high schools and uh, universities, uh, and improving the map around downtown St. Louis. Um, so I'm here uh, on behalf of my colleagues, uh, Dana Stuckey and Josh Siskind, uh, both who were integral in, in this partnership. Um, so I just want to make sure they have they have some credit. There they are. Um, Josh's picture is actually from Mapping USA or, or OSM Connect uh, from a year or two ago. Um, he even has a State of the Map shirt on, so um, he is here in spirit. Um, and Dana is based out of our St. Louis office as well. Um, a couple other shout outs as well to uh, Drew McAllister, who is the Parkway Schools Program Director for the SPARK program, uh, which I'm going to talk about, and also Dr. Freddie Wills, who is the VP for STEM Initiatives and Research and Partnerships at Harris-Stowe State University, uh, also in St. Louis. So Max are in St. Louis. Uh, we've actually had a presence in St. Louis since 2017. Um, which is you know, roughly around the time Maxar became Maxar, uh, if you've been following that story. Um, our, our office is in the heart of downtown St. Louis. We've got a couple pictures here of it. Uh, it's in close, uh, in close proximity to government customers and provides a space for collaboration with the community. And being an active member in the community is important, so that way we can share uh, our knowledge of the geospatial field uh, with you know, not only government customers, but with the community as well. Um, and uh, building those partnerships with local high schools and, and universities to help further, further their knowledge. So the SPARK program and our collaboration with Parkway Schools. Uh, this is just a, a clip from their website. I'm not going to read all of it, um, but the Parkway School District in, in St. Louis and the suburbs of St. Louis um, works actively with uh, companies and nonprofits uh, and organizations within, uh, within St. Louis uh, to help give students experience in you know, the, the real world and, and help them build technical skills, not just for the sake of doing a project, but something that is also beneficial to uh, you know, the organizations themselves. So re really allowing these high school students to uh, get their hands dirty in something they may not be familiar with. Um, and so last semester, uh, the fall, um, from September to December, uh, we served as a partner for mentoring five students uh, at Parkway Schools, helping them understand uh, geospatial data. And these are the students that we worked with, uh, giving their final presentations at the, uh, the T-Rex building, which is in, in downtown St. Louis, a, a great collaborative space um, for folks working there. Our goals for the SPARK program were to understand, create, and contribute. Um, and understanding just the basics of what geospatial data is and how it's used. A lot of people don't realize how much GIS and, and spatial data is all around us every day. And for high school students just sort of living their life with you know, any number of apps that they're integrating with or, uh, or interacting with, not integrating, um, you know, they are surrounded by, by geospatial data. Um, and sometimes I even forget how much space has to do with, with everything that we're involved in. Um, create, uh, through various mapping platforms and projects, we want them to, wanted the students to be able to create and edit geospatial data, and then also create a visualization of their team's work. And then contribute. Obviously, we're here at State of the Map. We wanted to make sure that uh, students were able to improve OpenStreetMap in St. Louis and areas that they were familiar with. Um, help aid in a humanitarian project, uh, introduce the students to the tasking manager and, and HOT, um, and then collaborate with code, uh, some basic code in a, in a GitHub repository. And so I'm gonna to touch on that a little bit as well. So the curriculum. Um, if you're at all familiar with the Agile framework for software development, uh, breaking things into sprints, giving uh, the students and, and, and collaborators, uh, you know, basic building blocks to help achieve um, something by, by the end of every two or three weeks, depending on, on the schedules of the students. Uh, basically, we had uh, two groups of students uh, on, on two days of the week, you know, uh, three students one day and then two students the other day, and it was sort of up to them to, to collaborate across their time over those two sprints, um, you know, giving them experience in a team-based environment uh, when, when there's a little bit of asynchronous work going on. 
Um, so the first sprint was you know, a very brief introduction uh, to GIS principles and, and OpenStreetMap. What's a point, what's a line, what's a polygon, why do we represent things that way, and also you know, using OSM as that gateway drug into, into GIS. <laughs> um, sprint two uh, was a little bit more uh, OSM research. We introduced the students to the OSM wiki, showed them a couple tools, and just sort of you know, gave them a little push. Um, let them explore you know, how, how to tag certain things, what types of things can be mapped in OSM, uh, things like that. Um, and then also continuing to identify areas in their community that they can start ma mapping. Basic things, buildings, driveways, uh, just in the very beginning. In sprint three, we moved on to uh, data investigation where we actually made them sort of take a little bit harder, harder look uh, at OSM in their communities and say, what, what actually needs to be improved? And actually we were, we were getting really good uh, feedback uh, from the students saying, hey, you know, I, I really wanna map the sidewalks. And like, that's awesome. That, that, that's things that are really great uh, to hear. And you know, seeing Eduardo's talk yesterday about uh, mapping pedestrian infrastructure, um, things that we can now take back to these students uh, in, a, in a future session um, or a future iteration of the project um, and, and providing that information to them. Uh, sprint four uh, is where we sort of split. We split from the you know just basic GIS and, and introduction to OpenStreetMap to a little bit more collaborative work, uh, in, with the creation of a web mapping uh, map uh, web map uh, in GitHub by forking an existing project and having all the students start to contribute to that. And then sprint five was a little bit more advanced uh, query writing and exporting data from OpenStreetMap using Overpass. Um, and then also designing the final project that they wanted to present. And then in sprint six, the uh, just continuing their, their final map collaboration. And so the initial focus area for um, the students around their schools is, uh, is our areas around Parkway North High School and Parkway South. And you can see they did uh, add you know, quite a few buildings, actually the, the golf courses uh, we're already there. Um, there's, you know, there's a lot of folks mapping golf courses, but um, buildings, driveways, uh, a number of sidewalks as well were added around the student school, um, just uh, allowing them to uh, get familiar with um, with the area. The web map design. I'm not as brave as uh, Steve Coast was. I'm not going to do a live demo, um, but uh, we do have the link to the map that they put together, and then a link to the GitHub repo as well uh, for anyone who wants to take a look. Um, and basically the map allowed them to uh, load some initial data that they wanted to into the map, uh, center the map on an area that they wanted the map to center on, uh, and also they could click a button um, and query overpass um, to bring in more data for their, their map extent. We encourage the students to collaborate uh, via pull requests in GitHub and also tracking their work using issues. Uh, in, in GitHub, uh, basically, you know, we, we'd set up a task and they'd tell us what they wanted to do. Um, we, we'd create an issue for it and we'd be able to have conversations with them asynchronously um, as they were um, working through things. So that's our work with the Spark program, but I also wanted to give a update to our work with Harris Stowe State University. Um, I did speak about this uh, last, whenever Mapping USA was. Um, we, we uh, Dana and myself spoke with um, Dr. Dr. Wills and gave that presentation. Uh, if you're not familiar with uh, with Harris Stowe, it is a historically black uh, public university in downtown St. Louis, uh, founded in the 1850s. Um, so, just sort of rehashing what, what we spoke about last time, um, Maxar's academic outreach is to inspire student academia. Um, by sharing our story, fostering the adoption of technology, and advancing collaborative opportunities. And working with Harris Stowe uh, is a demonstration of our commitment to our academic partners, to St. Louis, and to engaging and growing diversity in our workforce. So the mapping continues. Um, uh, last, last time we spoke, I think we were about halfway through this project. This is about seven neighborhoods in downtown St. Louis, right along the, the Mississippi River. <laughs> Um, we did hold, recently hold a second uh, mapping event with uh, university level and high school students uh, uh, at the T-Rex Center, um, but uh, in collaboration with Harris Stowe. 
Um, and again, just mapping this area in, in downtown St. Louis. Uh, we're continuing to map buildings and they've requested to start mapping sidewalks so they can help students with some of the research that they're working on. And um, one of the things that um, they're really interested in is you know, how, how can they start continuing to do outreach in the community um, for you know, doing research on food deserts, um, blighted properties, things like that. And so we, we know OSM is a great way to build that foundational map uh, for them. We don't really care about the numbers, the, you know, the 70 mappers, the 3,600 buildings. Buildings will be mapped, roads will, will be mapped. We're more focused on can we get folks in the community continue to uh, return to the map and, and keep mapping, building the community. So why is all of this important? I actually liked uh, Courtney's uh, description better of why these types of things are important. If you were here for her talk, she did a really great job. But um, I also think Whitney Houston said it uh, really well. I believe the children are our future. Teach them GitHub and let them lead the way. Show them all the beauty maps hold inside. <laughs> Give them a sense of pride to make it easier. Let the children's mapping remind us of how we used to be. Uh, Drew McAllister, the, the program manager for the Spark program, uh, he, you know, he gave his input. It's more than technical skills, they've learned the questions that must be asked for design to make sense in the real, real world. And just adding on to that, it's not only in a technical sense, it's in a spatial sense as well, um, letting people understand the space around them. What's next? Uh, investigating mobile mapping is an opportunity to continue to engage the community uh, and improving the map, um, getting people out there with cell phones. Uh, for, uh, if we've already built out the you know, more foundational features, we can use uh, Street Complete, something like that, or GoMap uh, to map POIs. Um, there's a number of applications out there. It's just uh, figuring out the best one for the needs of, of the students. Um, continued collaboration through the Spark program and continuing to refine that curriculum. We were very much building the car as we were driving it. Um, as a lot of things do happen, um, but we learned a lot in the program and I think it was pretty successful and we're, we're looking forward to being a part of it again in the fall semester. Uh, more regular events with Harris Stowe State University and government partners in the area. Um, we are always going to be there to help support these events, but um, the more that they can do on their own to um, you know, continue to do it on a more regular basis uh, with other communi community members to really drive the mapping needs. We're, we're there to help with the technical support, maybe give some space to do it in, um, but we want the community to be uh, making the decisions. And then municipal outreach. Um, there, I believe it was the GIS manager for the city of St. Louis um, posted in the OSM US Slack. Um, and so we've sort of been sl paying, playing Slack tag um, and can't really lock each other down, but I plan on reaching out to him. He's got a lot of data and wants to contribute it to OSM. So. Um, continuing to build those relationships as well. And then just a couple other Maxar things, uh, a little commercial here at the end. Um, launching this month is SpaceNet 8. Um, if you're not familiar with SpaceNet, it's a collaboration between Maxar, AWS, TopCoder, the IEEE Geoscience uh, and Remote Sensing Society. Um, it is a, it's, the purpose is to accelerate open source geospatial mas machine learning. Um, so it is a competition um, uh, with a multi-class segmentation problem uh, using uh, post-event flood detection re related to infrastructure, that, and we're launching that later this month. And there are cash prizes. So just more information about SpaceNet. And then the open data program, uh, which many of you may be familiar with. Um, the open data program allows us to release imagery uh, under a non-commercial license uh, after a natural or, or in some cases a man-made disaster. Um, that imagery is available to be mapped in OpenStreetMap um, or like I said, any non-commercial uh, purpose. Just some highlights of it. One major thing is the, the box on the updates for 2022. All of the imagery is now being released in our ARD format, uh, analysis ready data, um, which gives, you know, not only just one swath of imagery, um, which we had been doing before, but uh, multispectral bands, um, a number of different data masks uh, that are all listed there, um, and it, it's all uh, pre-processed uh, and orthorectified to minimize the work that you need to do to use the pixels. 
and 1.8 million square kilometers of imagery have been released since 2017, which is kind of cool. That's it. Thank you very much.